Okay, we've got to talk about these rate increases because they are getting crazy. Today we're going to talk about Allstate and the large rate increase that we're seeing across the board. So where Allstate is raising multiple areas and likely the area that you're in. So I came across an article and I decided to dive into it a little bit further. So we came up to an article from Insurance Business America, which led me to find a couple other articles from Bankrate and other different companies that talked about the statistics and the rate increases that Allstate is planning on. It probably has already happened in your area if you haven't had a renewal. Whenever your policy renews, the date that you started it, if it's a six month policy, which a lot of Allstate policies are, then in six months from the date you started it is when you're going to see that increase. You'd likely see it about three weeks ahead of time because they give you a little bit of a notice ahead of time. So there's not a, a shock. You have time to talk to the agent and they can adjust the coverages if need be. Or if you're going to leave them, you've got ample time to do so. You're not tied to any company in any way. So if you left them in the middle of the policy, it doesn't really make a difference to you. You just get credited back anything that you've paid ahead of time or you owe whatever you owe left if you're behind. Now, the rate is actually quoted that they could even be as close to 12%. It's between 3 and 12 is what they're stating in these articles. And I actually think it's going to be closer to that 10 to 12%. As we've seen the previous year, 7.8%. Overall, they're expecting 5 But it really depends on the way the economy goes. A lot of it is not going in our favor. And let's go over those specifics to show you what exactly exactly is causing that rate increase across the board. Before we dive into that, some of you just want the quick answer. And if you're with Allstate or you're with any company in general, and you're just looking for a better option, there's a company I'll link below, which is called Cover. They're a channel sponsor and they shop up to 30 different companies. So if you're looking for a different option between your Nationwides and your Safecos and your Progressives and a whole bunch of other companies, they can shop it across the board for you with an easy click of a button. It's simple, easy to use. It's available to you if you want. So according to Steve Ellis, the assistant vice president and claims manager says that overall the cost of doing business has increased. And that's kind of an obvious, right? That's pretty much across the board with everything. Food has gone up, uh, going to McDonald's has gone up, everything has gone up in cost. And that's just one of the pieces that they're talking about. But going further into the article, this is more from the bank rate one, is the inflation has caused about a 7% increase. So the consumer price index rose 7%. And that means that as a consumer, you and I are spending 7% more for goods and services. But that's only touching the tip of the iceberg because the actual cost of a brand new vehicle today is about 11.8% higher just to purchase a new car. And on the used market, it's gone up 37 plus percent overall. So in the last three years, we've gone from what a car would cost $10,000 would now cost 13,000 plus for that same vehicle. It's gotten a little bit out of hand Part of that is because of the precious metal shortage that we've had and there's a lot of materials that we just can't get anymore. It's also the workers. Some of them aren't working those same jobs. Prices had to be cut across the board. We'll talk in a minute about what all states doing because they actually are reducing their costs pretty drastically. And we're going to talk about what that means for all state employees. The cost of healthcare has also gone up about 9.7%, so almost 10. And it's adding to your cost because liability, which is what your insurance pays if you injure someone, has got to reflect that. If you go to the doctor today because of a car accident and you're checking an arm that might be broken, that was a $5,000 bill that can now be a $5,500 bill or even a $6,000 bill. They haven't slowed down. The prices have just gone up and up and up. It really just depends on what companies are catching up. The more that the technology at a hospital has to go up, the more the charge has to go up and the more your car insurance has to go up to capture the difference in cost. These companies aren't a benefit company. They have to make a profit and they're not making very good profits. As we saw in a previous video we did with State Farm, where we talked about how they increased their revenue. They actually grew as a company, but they were about 60% lower profits. So they're still getting customers, but they're not making the same money that they used to. If you run the company right, you didn't hire a whole bunch of employees, but you kind of do to take care of the customers 
and you have to be very specific on other departments. So some of us are noticing that claims are taking longer. There's a lot more length to processes. Let's take a car crash, for example. Let's say that you get into an accident and the fender is damaged. You're not injured. We're going to leave the healthcare and the medical out of it. Let's just pretend that the car fender got dented and it needs to be replaced. The shortage of mechanics, the overworked mechanics, and the cost of a mechanic used to be about, let's just say, $100 for that fender. It's close to $300 for that same labor, same material, same cost for that used vehicle. On top of it, when you crash your car, if that vehicle was totaled, the cost to pay out on that car is more. Now I get it, the insurance company is responsible, hopefully, to decide that we are expecting this inflation, we are expecting these increases, so we have to charge accordingly. But it doesn't always work that way because customers will leave you as quick as they join you if they see that your rates are changing drastically. I wouldn't expect the rate to be the same last year as it is this year. They can go down, although everyone says they never do, but they do. If the inflation levels out and the risk levels out and the changes happen, then you can see the rates go back down, but not likely anytime soon. Just to put some numbers to that, the article actually touts that unemployment is 3.9% as of December of 2021. That's sharply down from April 2020 peak of 14.7%. So that's actually a good thing but not yet back to the pre-pandemic levels. That was 3.5% before our pandemic happened and people stopped driving. When that happened, the prices went down a little bit. If you were renewing the policy during that time, you probably didn't see the price change. You saw it dip a little bit, and now they're gonna go right back up because now there's more drivers. There's actually more fatalities now than there was in the past years. So there's so much stuff. It's overwhelming just to see all of the things that are causing these rate increases. And some of them are fairly just as far as a company standpoint. If I was to open up an ice cream shop and all of my costs doubled because the drivers weren't coming as often and the ice cream went up in cost because the farmers needed certain milk and they're overworked and there's not enough employees and all of that, whatever the case is, I've got to raise the prices. That's just part of it. The opportunity for other companies now is not everybody is having this issue. Usually your larger companies, your state farms, your progressives, your Geico's, your all states, your, your big conglomerate companies are going to feel the hurt worse because they have the majority share market. Six to 12% is pretty common. I would expect them to have. And if they have that large of an impact, they're gonna be the ones that get hurt the worst. Now, if their agents have done a good job of building rapport and letting you know that they're there for you, that's a different story. Maybe they'll hold on to those customers for another year or two because they know that the claims process is there for them. They can handle that situation. Other smaller companies are not gonna have as large of an impact because some of those areas aren't impacted. Yes, the inflation has likely gone up and yes, the medical has likely gone up and yes, the car cost and all of those things have gone up, but a lot of companies are very tight with the way they invest and the way that they process everything. And so for your smaller companies, they can make bigger shifts and bigger movements without having as large of an increase. I'll give you a really good example. I'm gonna tout farmers here. I'm assuming you're gonna raise the rates. I don't know, I haven't researched it, but one of their sub companies that I actually work with is going to have a rate decrease on the auto. So one of their sub companies of you are gonna have a really good option because you had the higher midterm rates and now that you've leveled everything off and now that they've kind of figured out some of the what they need to figure out as far as who their client is, are they fits for that company, are they gonna have false claims, good claims, the situation, and that's one of the positive things that I'm talking about. Farmers is a large company. I expect that one to be hit harder than one of their sub companies like Foremost or Foremost Star or all of their sub companies that they have. I believe they actually bought MetLife as well. So that's being plugged into their scenario to where those guys aren't gonna be impacted as much. Keep in mind, they're separate companies. You've got Liberty Mutual, Safeco, they're probably not impacted as much, Liberty maybe. You've got Farmers and Bristol West, they're probably not impacted as much. Same thing, Allstate, Insurance. you've got all of these sub companies, they have 
different versions. You've also got Liberty and now they own State Auto or purchased State Auto this year. Congratulations. That's little companies or mid-sized companies that aren't gonna have as large of an impact as some of your larger companies. So is it possible to avoid the increases? Yes, there are a few things that you could do and you really should do is to check with your current agent and see if there's any new discounts that have become available. If you're not currently, or if you haven't done any type of a telematics, I'm personally testing the right track from Safeco and going through theirs. It's been interesting to see my increases and decreases in price based on how I drive. I'm probably not the most amazing driver, but I, I do decently. So it's kind of cool to see that discount added on where you get 10% in most cases with most companies. And then if you drive really good, then you're gonna get more of a discount. Just be careful, there are a few of them out there that give you a rate increase if you drive negatively not very common it's usually two out of ten people ish that are the person that has that small rate increase but it's something to look at as a possibility once again i've got the link below if you guys are interested in getting a quote otherwise if you're interested in checking out a review i did on allstate they are a fairly decent company there's a few things that you should know about them that i was a little bit shocked to learn uh, but overall really good option go ahead and check the video out otherwise i'm mark with ink insurance I'll see you in the next one.